Voters in the tiny Gulf state of Bahrain will be going to the polls this weekend. It's not part of the democratic awakening that's been spreading through much of the Arab world. Bahrain's had a parliament for some years, although much of the real power remains in the hands of the royal family. The king, Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, and his uncle, Khalifa bin Sulman al-Khalifa, who's been prime minister ever since Bahrain won its independence more than 40 years ago. This weekend's election is for 18 parliamentary seats that were vacated earlier in the year, when opposition MPs resigned in protest against the government's response to opposition demonstrations. More than 30 people have been killed in the protests, more than a 1,000 have been arrested. Human rights groups have complained repeatedly of serious human rights abuses since the protest started. Today, here in London, there was a demonstration by opposition protesters outside the Bahraini embassy. Paul Moss was there. There was music, there were flags and there were slogans daubed on banners. The genteel quiet of Belgravia was interrupted today as protesters stood outside the Bahrain embassy, angry at what they say is the continuing abuse of human rights there. We are staying here, protest here, because the government doing everything. People died under the torturing, suffering too much, suffering too much. Now, you come originally from Somalia. Why have you come to a demonstration to show solidarity with Bahrain? Firstly, uh, I think uh, it's uh, an international issue. The uh, themes that the uh, February 14th movement actually upheld. This is the anti-government demonstrators in Bahrain? Absolutely. They basically uh, aired very universal themes, human rights and the extent of the brutality uh, that uh, they have uh, faced for the last six months or so. Is totally unacceptable. It's six months since pro-democracy demonstrations in Bahrain were put down. Campaigners there say at least 36 people were shot dead by security forces and in the wake of this, 18 opposition MPs resigned their seats in protest. This weekend, there'll be elections in Bahrain to fill those empty seats. But the voting will not be free or fair, according to Dominic Kavakep of the Bahrain Justice and Development Movement. The elections in Bahrain are an attempt to, to, to portray the country as being democratic. But actually, if you look at how, how the elections are made up, if you look at the voting boundaries, they massively disadvantage opposition areas. It's, it's crazy that in a country that has a majority of Shia, you still have a minority of opposition MPs elected. It just doesn't make sense. That view is supported by international human rights groups. Amnesty International says that parliamentary seats in Bahrain have been rigged so that Sunni voters have far more power than Shia. And Human Rights Watch also has its doubts about the forthcoming vote. The organisation's UK director, David Mepham, warns that anyone who speaks out there risks being locked up. People remain detained sometimes uh, without you know, proper information being provided as to their whereabouts or what, you know, what it is they're supposedly said to have done. A lot of these people are people who were just basically protesting and demanding greater democracy, the rule of law, respect for human rights. And also people are being tried in kind of special military courts rather than in civilian courts, which in our judgment fall foul of kind of international standards of basic justice. And it's not just the protesters who find themselves in trouble in Bahrain, according to people I spoke to outside the embassy today. One man gave his name only as Shahab. You could see why he kept his family name secret. Because my brother has been speaking out against the regime, my family has been targeted in Bahrain. They went, for example, at the beginning to my nephews and they told them, if your uncle doesn't shut up, we are going to keep coming to you. My sister being targeted, just like literally every household in Bahrain is affected by, by what's going on from the government. They claim that they are democratic and they are okay with people speaking their minds. And yet, when someone speaks their mind, they, they go and target their families. Anti-government protester Shahab outside the Bahraini embassy in London, ending that report by Paul Moss. Well, just a short time ago, I spoke to the embassy's spokesman, Fahed al-Khalifa, and I asked him for his response to the concerns being expressed, both by opposition protesters and by international human rights groups. There were all sorts of allegations, but as a nation, we have to come together. One people, one goal. His Majesty the King, after restoring the peace and order in the country, he asked for a national dialogue where people came together and they discussed uh, their concerns. And after the national dialogue, His Majesty the King, he invited the Independent Commission. It is the first time in the world that a leader invites an Independent Commission 
to investigate his own government. But we Amnesty have, International say, as indeed do Human Rights Watch, that they are not being allowed to do the kind of investigation that they would like to do to see how much of what they fear has been going on in the way of human rights abuses actually has been happening. Well, if there's any wrongdoings, whoever made the mistake or did something wrong will be punished. Only today, His Majesty the King actually issued a decree where it uh, gives the people that were harmed during the crisis a compensation. There is something, though, seriously wrong, isn't there? In a country where you have 70% of the population belonging to one religious group, the Shia, 30% to the Sunni, but it is the Sunni, through the royal family, who govern, who have the power, and the Shia, the majority, who say they are discriminated against, who have no proper access to power, and indeed who often are dismissed from their jobs on the grounds that they are Shia. Bahrainis are one people. Of course, there are people who are uh, against, and, you know, we respect their opinion. And uh, Article 18 of the Constitution gives people the right, if they feel they are discriminated against, whether they are Sunni, Shia, Christian or Jewish. They're all Bahrainis and they all have equal rights. Isn't the reality of Bahrain that all effective power remains in the hands of one family, the royal family? The king, his uncle, the prime minister, to a lesser extent the crown prince. You share their name. I don't know if you are yourself a member of the family. Yes, I am. Uh -huh. We are in the process of democratization. In 2002, there was first election. So, you know, it takes time for people to reach the full uh, democracy. Are you saying to us then that there are no problems in Bahrain? No, of course. There I'm telling you that there's problems in Bahrain like anywhere else in the world. But we have to come together and talk about our problems. Does talking together, coming together, include the right to demonstrate on the streets, to protest? There is no problem for peaceful demonstrations. We always allow people to demonstrate. It's not quite true, is it? You don't always allow people to demonstrate because some months ago there were some grotesque signs of security crackdowns against demonstrators. You had to invite the Saudis in to help you deal with them, didn't you? That's actually a totally different uh, subject. In what way is it a different subject? Because, you know, that there's uh, the Peninsula Shield that uh, moved in to protect the installations. So those human rights groups then, those opposition spokespeople who say that Bahrain has been oppressing protesters, they've got it wrong, have they? Yes, definitely they got it wrong. To invite the independent commission, this means you have nothing to hide. Spokesman for the Bahraini embassy here in London, Fahed Al-Khalifa. <clears throat>